So Radha Radha everyone, we are continuing from the Saints of Raj reading. And last time we had problems during the connection and the line was uh, interrupting a lot. But we read the story of Sri Jagadish Das Babaji. And Gurudev asked that today again we read this story. We start again from the same because Radha Radha, please not talk. That we start again from the same uh, story because it's very beautiful and full of teachings. So, yeah, by internet mercy today we can read it through. So, for those who have the book and want to follow, is the page number 153, the chapter 17. Sri Jagadish Das Babaji. <coughs> Not very far from the famous Madan Mohan's temple in Vrindavan is Kalidaha, the part of river Yamuna, where Krishna once danced over the head of the multi-headed cobra called Kaliya. On the bank of the river is a beautiful spot surrounded by trees. Imagine that in the midst of the trees, in front of an old cottage, he seated an old Mahatma. Though old, he is tall and well built. The luster of his snaked body seems to penetrate and dispel the growing darkness of sunset. The slow movement of his lips and the Tulasi rosary in his hand indicate that he is engaged in Japa, but his raised neck fixed gaze and the glowing smile on his face indicate that he is completely lost in the enjoyment of a scene of transcendent beauty. By his side is sitting a very handsome young boy wearing only a loincloth of jute. He is also engaged in japa he looks at the face of Baba and then in the direction in which his gaze is fixed. But not being able to see anything in that direction, he keeps on looking at Baba's face with curiosity. Baba suddenly exclaims, See, Gopal, see! Krishna Balaram returning from the forest and the cows trailing behind. Oh, how beautiful they look. I do not see anything, Baba, replies Gopal with tears in his eyes. You will see, I have said, you will see, says Baba, affectionately giving a mild slap on his cheek. The old Babaji is the Siddha Jagadish Das Babaji of Kalidaha, and the young boy is Dhirendranath Chakravarti, the son of Sri Bhupendranath Chakravarti, a landlord of Bengal. The boy later became known as Siddha Sri Gorangadas Babaji of Raman Reti, Vrindavan, but he was called Gopal by Jagadish Das Baba out of affection. Jagadish Das Babaji came of a respectable Brahmin family of Vardaman in Bengal. He was a very successful doctor. He used to practice in Kala Kalana. At the age of 50, 
he took initiation from Siddha Sri Bhagavan Das Babaji of Kalana. Soon after, he renounced the world and came to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he lived for some time in the old temple of Madan Mohan, but later shifted to a small cottage in Kalidaha. Baba's life was simple and austere. He lived on Madhukari and did not take salt. Bhagavan Das Baba ordinarily advised his disciple to do only Harinam Japa, but he considered Jagadish Das to be above the ordinary in devotion. Therefore, he initiated him in Raganuga Bhajan. Raganuga Bhajan flows spontaneously from rag or love in the heart of the devotee for Radha Krishna, disregarding the rules and regulations of the ritualistic bhakti and consists mainly in meditating on their divine lila. Practicing bhajan according to the Raganuga mode of bhakti, he used to be mostly absorbed in deep meditation. Sometimes he would be so absorbed that he would be unaware even of the food kept before him by his disciple for eating, and it would remain untouched until he regained other consciousness. Sometimes people would come to see him, perform dandavat, and sit down before him but he would not know about their arrival until the absorption was over and someone told him about it. He would then feel very uncomfortable and think that he had committed an apparat offense against the visitors. To guard himself against the apparat thereafter, when he sat outside his cottage, he put Shalagram Shila in front of him so that the dandavat made by the visitors might be to Shalagram, not to him. Whenever Jagadish Das Baba had any difficulty in Lila Smaran, he sought the favor of the Vaishnavas or the Raja, the holy dust of Vrindavan. One day, when he had no revelation of Lila, he went as usual to Sringarvat for Madhukari in the evening. Premananda Goswami, who was at that time the Adhikari, the presiding authority of Sringarvat, said, Baba, what is the matter? Why do I not see the usual exaltation and brightness on your face today? Baba replied, What shall I say? My stars are dull today. I stand in need of your benediction. Goswamiji understood what he meant. He advised him to roll in the Raja, the dust of Vrindavan. 
He began to roll on the ground in the courtyard of Shingarvat. As he was doing so, he began to feel that the floodgate of the current of Krishna Lila, which had been closed against him, had to reopen. Jagadish Das Baba used to swim freely like a fish in the ocean of Krishna Lila. The changing scenario of the Lila brought about corresponding changes in his emotions. His emotions were so strong that they visibly affected the body and brought about corresponding changes in its color. When for any reason the flow of Lila stopped, he felt strangled and tossed in pain like a fish out of water. <clears throat> the pain would be so severe that he would even think of committing suicide. Once in this state, he said to Gopal, Gopal, would you do one thing? Surely, Baba, let me know what I have to do. I will, I will stand on the edge of the well and you push me into it. For the first time in his life, Goranga Das was compelled to disobey Baba. Not only that, he started keeping strict watch over him so that he might not commit suicide. Until Baba's original state was restored, he always kept close to him. As ordained by Jagadish Das Babaji, Goranga Das lived in Govardhan, where he practiced Raganuga Bhajan. But very often he came to Vrindavan to look after Jagadish Das Baba. Once, while he was sleeping on the ground near Jagadish Das Baba's bed, Jagadish Das Baba affectionately planted his foot on his chest. Since then, the Divine Lila of Radha Krishna began to unfold itself to him. Once Garanga Dasji went to Radha Kund, there he was invited by a sadhu whom he had not known before, to stay with him in Radhakun for some time. He accepted the invitation, but he had stayed with him only for one night when he discovered that the sadhu belonged to a pseudo-religious sect in which woman and wine were necessary parts of sadhana. The next morning he left his company, but he found that his heart was empty. The subtle effect of the company of the unholy man had blocked his vision and he was not able to see Krishna Leela. He felt choked like a fish who suddenly finds that the water of the pond in which it lived has dried up. Immediately he started for the Parikrama of Giriraj. It was the month of June when the sun is hottest. He was walking the whole day in the scorching heat of the sun 
and praying to Giriraj. In the evening, he felt tired and lay down for rest on a step of the staircase of Uddavkund, but he fell asleep. It was dangerous to sleep on the step because if he turned sides in sleep, he would fall into the Kunda pond. When he woke up, he found that someone had lifted him bodily and laid him at a safer place. He looked all around to see who that person could be. But to his surprise, he found that no one was anywhere near that place. The next day, he went to Jagadish Das Baba in Vrindavan. No sooner had he laid himself prostrate before his feet, then he shouted, Like a fool, you sleep wherever you like. You do not know where to sleep and where not to sleep. Gorangadas understood that it was Baba who had lifted him from the step of Uddavkund. This brought him the realization that Gurudev followed the disciple like a shadow wherever he went and protected him. The realization brought tears in his eyes. Goranga Das then told Baba about the loss of vision he had suffered on account of his meeting with the Sadhu in Radhakund and prayed for his blessings. Baba blessed him and his vision was restored. Jagadish Das Baba was always very cautious lest he might commit an offense against someone. Saints like him often avoid visitors on account of their absorption in bhajan. But Baba was always careful not to disappoint anyone who came to him. If anyone advised him to the contrary, he said, My name is Jagadish Das, which means the servant of Jagadish, the Lord. I regard everyone who comes to me as Jagadish himself, who has come in his form. I feel that it is my duty to serve him. Mahaprabhu sends a man to me so that I may answer his questions, remove his doubts, and give him necessary advice regarding bhajan. If I do not serve him in this manner, do I not commit an offense against both him and Mahaprabhu? Baba did not arrange kata or path at his place so that people who came to him for advice at that time might not have to return disappointed. He was available to visitors for conversation at all times except when he was lost in Lilasmaran. In the midst of conversation, he would sometimes himself ask a question and answer it. And then he would ask others to express their opinion because he did not like to oppose them if they express their views first. And their views happen to be different from his. After the conversation, when people wanted to leave, he would anxiously look at their faces 
to see whether they were going back happy and satisfied or not. Once Baba's brother came from Bengal, Baba treated him affectionately and inquired about his welfare. When he said that his wife was dead, Baba said, God's grace, he has made you free. You can now come to Vrindavan and do bhajan. After the brother had gone, he began to think, My brother did not look happy when he was leaving. Possibly he was displeased with me, because instead of expressing sympathy with him in his bereavement, I had said that God had done him a favor. If Baba had known where he was staying, he would have gone there to apologize to him. But he had said on leaving that he would return to Vardaman in a day or two. So he went to the station every day for two or three days with the expectation that he might meet him there and apologize. <coughs> but he could not meet him. He also did not know his Vardaman address. Therefore, he wrote a letter to a friend in Vardaman asking him to inquire from his brother and let him know whether he had forgiven him. The friend replied that his brother was not at all displeased. He did not go to see him again because he did not want to disturb him in his bhajan. But since then, whenever someone came to see him, he first inquired about his address. <laughs> <laughs> Baba never found fault with anyone. Also, he did not talk ill of anyone. He did not go anywhere to listen to any religious discourse. Because he apprehended that the speaker might say something which he did not like or approve, and that might make him find fault with the speaker. In Vrindavan, the saints often organize festivals to celebrate certain occasions, as for example, the birthday of Ram or Krishna. But Baba never organized any festival because that disturbed his bhajan. The devotees generally regard it as incumbent, incumbent on them to observe the disappearance day of their guru. Baba observed the disappearance day of his guru by purchasing one malpua, which is a sweet, sweet puri, and giving a piece of it to everyone who came to him as prashad. Once a devotee named Sinu Babu offered him 40 rupees so that he might celebrate the disappearance day of his guru decently. He could not turn down the offer made in the name of the Guru. He went to the market and purchased molasses worth 20 rupees for preparing Malpua. 
After keeping the molasses in his cottage, he went to a nearby well for washing his feet, but forgot to close the door of the cottage. On returning, he found that a number of monkeys had entered the cottage and were freely feasting on the molasses. Baba laughed to his heart's content to see the monkeys feasting. There was no question of his driving them away, for they were the monkeys of Vrindavan, and they had kindly invited themselves to the function in connection with the celebration of the disappearance day of his guru. When the feast was over and the monkeys were leaving, he respectfully bowed down to them. <laughs> In the evening, when Sinu Babu came and inquired about the celebration, he said, the celebration was very successful. A large number of monkeys Vaishnavas feasted on molasses. <laughs> The feast cost only 20 rupees. Here are the remaining 20 rupees, which I thankfully return. Regarding Prashad, you may go inside the cottage. Probably you will find some particles of it scattered on the ground. Jagadish Das Baba was free from all desires, but once a desire arose in his mind. He desired that a beautiful lake be built in Kalidaha to commemorate Krishna's sport with a cobra called Kaliya. He mentioned this to Kamini Babu, the manager of Raj Rishi Banamali Rayabadura. Kamini Babu began to raise contributions for the project. Readily, the rich people began to contribute. A widow of Lala Babu's family contributed 75,000 rupees. The Raja of Hetamapura contributed 25,000. Raj Rishi Banamari Roy agreed to take responsibility for the rest of the expenditure. The map and estimate for the construction of a beautiful lake were prepared in consultation with Jagadish Das Baba. But soon Baba found that the lake had taken the place of Krishna Lila in his mind. This made him so angry with himself that he went and hid himself in some forest for a number of days. People went out in search of him, but he could not be found. Suddenly, one day he came back. Kamini Babu asked for his permission to start the work of digging. He became very grave and said, the desire for the lake caused obstruction in my bhajan. If now the work starts, my bhajan will be over. So I insist that no one should make even a mention of it so long as I am alive. Jagadish Das Babaji was very humble. Mahaprabhu has said in the famous Trinada P. Shloka that one should be humble like a blade of grass and tolerant and forbearing like a tree. He should give respect to everyone 
without desiring to be respected by others. In Baba, the meaning of the shloka had assumed a concrete form. When someone asked him how to achieve prema, he replied, In order to achieve prem, one should try to mold himself into the frame of the Trinadapi Shloka. The more he molds himself according to it, the nearer he will be to Prema. Mm. And when he has completely molded himself, he would most certainly achieve it. He also said, when your mind is completely free from all desires, except the desire for Prema Bhakti, then and only then you will realize Krishna Bhakti. Siddha saints can leave their body at will. When Jagadish Das Baba became a hundred years old, he desired to leave his body. At that time, Guranga Das Babaji was living with him. On account of his, of his affection for Guranga Das, it was not possible for Baba to leave the body in his presence. Therefore, he asked him to go and live in Barshana and serve the Panukar Sarovar, a large pond, by sweeping and cleaning its surroundings every day. When he was about to leave, he said to him, Remember three things. Never ask anyone for any favor. Never disclose the secret of your heart to anyone. Never attend a feast. Guranga Das began to live in Barshana and render regular service to Bhanukar Kunda. After some days, Jagadish Das Baba appeared before him in a luminous body. He saw him standing at some distance from him. But as he moved towards him, he asked him not to do so by waving his hand and disappeared. Garanga Dasji understood that Baba had left the body. Struck with grief, he immediately started for Vrindavan. On the way, he learned that Baba had actually left the body on the sixth day of the second half of the month Asada in 1915. Sri Jagadish Das Baba Ji Ki Jai. To say something? No, nothing. Is it Rama Krishna? No, you want to say something? Anyone like to share something or ask any question? Yes. Um, why shouldn't you ask uh, a favor? What? She has one question, oh. one of the instruction of uh, Jagadish Das Baba. So one question, because we are connected, I will say loudly. One question, uh, 
Eva as one devotee. She's asking why one of, of Baba's instruction was that of never ask any favor from anyone. So, <laughs> <You reply. laughs> so because uh, here say in order to achieve prema, one should try to mold himself into the flame of the Tunadi Shiroka. Tunadi Shiroka means uh, I feel myself the lower than grass on the street. We cannot hear. Mm. Uh -huh. No, this one? So because, uh, because here Baba say, in order to achieve prema, one should try to mold himself in the flame of the Tunada Pishuroka. Tunada Pishuroka is, uh, we should feel myself, ourselves, like a lower than grass on the street. Um, and then, like a like tree, we have to tolerate because tree did not ask anything. If so much sunshine there, but tree did not say, "Please give me water, please give me something." Did not ask, or somebody want to come took the fruits or took leaves or anything, took branch, but he did not, he did not protect, protest. And uh, some want to take shelter on the shade of a tree. They allow, you know, the tree allow them to. And also we have to always respect to everybody or any living entity. So in that state, we can chant uh, holy name incessantly. So if we say, if ask anyone for any favor, which I do <laughs> many times. So, and then that is against the this to not be bus. So real devotee did not ask anything. And always free to give anything, free to serve anybody. So I think this represent show us humbleness. If we are a little bit thinking I'm great, then we can ask somebody to use, oh, please, please wash my plate. Oh, please clean this room. Please wash my clothes. So in this mentality, it's not servant. It's not humble. So here Baba say, to get prema, we have to be like to not be bus, also completely free from all desires. Except the desire for prema bhakti. So I think also like a never attend the feast. Sometimes we also attend the feast. Because to, to attend the feast, then we have tendency to, to satisfy our tongues. And easy to forget ourselves. We think, oh, I am this body. So Mahaprabhu told us, don't wear nice clothes. Don't eat palatable uh, dishes, food. 
So like this, and also never disclose the secret of your heart to anyone. Because uh, the secret with Radha and Mohan, if we disclose the secret to anyone, then Radha Mohan may not give us the mercy again. Sorry. <clears throat> I want to say something about not take uh, invitation for the feast. <coughs> what does it mean for me? Oh, yes. here. Yeah. I, I want to say something to share what for me it does mean this instruction. How, how, how I'm feeling. I think it's not necessary, but if devotee, your friend, invited you to the feast, I no, no, I will not go. No, it does this mean what I, you said? Don't. It's not good to be the master, to take service. Like recently, Shidar Bayer cooked four types of pizza. It's very nice. It's uh, giving happiness to devotees. And what I saw, Rasalila cut it, Mahabhava is distributed. This type of taking uh, part in the feast, I think is good. Actually, and oh, yeah. Lila of Mahaprabhu, we are reading in Chitain Charitamrita. When they did Gundicha Marjana, Artavis was seized. And if Mahaprabhu saw what someone lazy, he told, okay, this person will receive less and he will distribute prasad. I think it's good to take part, but in which mood is the question? Yeah, and also, actually, that's a good, you know, that Radha Charampapa said true. Especially some materialistic, materialistic person give donation and give feast. At that time, if, is that giving feast, which kind of person giving feast? Which kind of person give donation to this feast? I think that is the most important thing. Because if materialistic person give feast, then materialistic subtle desire into this food. Then whoever takes this food, it may, it may affect it. But like Shuridara Bhaiya, who is a pure devotee, can, you know, can make, you know, prasada. Then if we take, we can purify. Or two trucks. Or two trucks. You know, but I say, <laughs> but someone has so much material desire, like I say, person from Richie, you know, Richie, Rich, uh, say, rich person who has many desires, material desire. If that person contribute this and then faced, and this later on, there come some, some, some example also we could find out. <laughs> of course, you know, we are, you know, now this, this three thing also not so easy for us. Just we follow good day with instruction. That is safe. But this is real, real sadhu. Like even Radha, Radha, like our Paramaguru Dev also say, Radha Govindas Babaji Maharaj also say, to find Rashka Vaishnava is difficult. Even though some Pandara, if someone, someone hold the Pandara, big feast, Mm -hmm. Pandara. But, Pandara. But, uh, you know, many Rashka Vaishnava does not come to the Pandara. Because uh, he, he ate only himself cooking or madukari or some who is a very trustful person, like a, you know, personal servant. Only that eat, that food could take, you know. Mm -hmm. Because other food, we don't know where come from, what kind of purity is there. Mm -hmm. 
So therefore, many Rashika, you know, many Rashika Vaisha, <laughs> it's very difficult to find out. So, this is. Yeah, one thing just I would like to maybe say that as many, many instruction we find anywhere, but also in this book here, like now Jagadish Das Baba was telling to Goranga, Das Baba is closest disciple, which was in a certain uh, Varnashrama, let's say, was in a certain stage, but the same thing I think cannot be applied to everyone. So I don't think we have to take like, oh, I have to copy the sadhu. For his state, for example, yesterday, we have been invited to one feast <laughs> in Radharaman temple. And uh, like I'm a, just a normal person that I'm working, going around. When I'm going to Delhi, I'm eating outside to, uh, I don't know, some maybe Asuric persons. <laughs> I don't know where I, I have to eat someplace because all the day I have to be outside. So for me, to go to Radharaman feast, taking the prasad of Radharaman is a very, very great thing. And for my very fallen state, that I'm always, uh, if just I'm by myself, I'm always in Maya. But I've been with some Vaishnava there, very high Vaishnava, and they, of course, helped me just by their vibration. And of course, in this case, of Sadhu, like Babaji, like Jagadish Das Baba, of his closest disciple, which we can see the sample here of Kesha Baba, how they behave. They, be, they are in a different stage. So they also practice and do things in a, in a different way. So yeah, just I feel that this instruction we can get like as, at least me, sorry, not we, but at least me, as an inspiration. Uh, at least to try to do something in that way, but uh, if I take some different medicine, you know, and I'm not, uh, and my stage is different, then it can be even more harmful. So it's good to, uh, yeah, as Jayanandaji said, follow instruction of Gurudev, because Jagadas, this Das Baba was his guru and was giving instruction to him, or to according to him. And uh, we can be in a different state and we get instructions as, so as you see Gurudev so many times, go there, make, make feast, ask him to help you. <laughs> so, <laughs> ask him to help you. <laughs> so now we should not feel, oh, I don't have to anymore to ask any, anything from anyone. <laughs> you know? So we should, yeah, not, not copy just by, blindly, you know, uh, just for the shake of, I will do it. Um, uh, when Bhaktivedanta Sanya Prabhupada came to the Western countries, he told to his new disciples in Western countries, Ekadashi means feast. <laughs> <laughs> I saw practically then devotees who is not uh, eager to do bhajan, they not came to the stage. They trying to fast in Akadashi. They hated Akadashi. Actually, the Akadashi is Bhakti Devi, it's Shimat Radhika. And this feeling towards Shimat Radhika, it's not good at all. It's better to follow Shil Prabhupada's instruction for his devotees. When he told Akadashi men feast, then for them, Akadashi is a festival. It's something very, very happy. It's happy day. And then after some time, it's by Harikatha, by some prayers and mercy, the desire come and such desire what the devotee in, in separation could not eat, could not sleep. It will be very natural. It's what just Sri Darabhai has explained. It's according to this stage. Bhakti is not duties. Bhakti is coming from the desire in heart. It's very natural. And about flavor, I do not understand this word. It means some benefit, yeah? Like a favor and N something. Favor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, ex uh, not expect uh, what you will receive something for your service because he is cleaning around this kunda. 
if someone, for example, like Janandaji, giving uh, Harikatha explanation, Srimad Bhagavatam, to uh, people who is coming to him, devotees who is coming to him. And in some time, I heard from Kishoriji, he did job, he has a work job, he uh, get money for by this uh, way. This is mean he can freely give Harikatha without, uh, how to say, without waiting what people will give him money. Because if if he need money, if someone who is speaking Harikatha and he he needs money, he will think, oh, how much they can give me? This is not bhakti. It's not uh, a real Harikatha. Real Harikatha I mean, coming from the pure heart, like in this verse, Trinada Pisa Taror Apisa Hishna, Taro, the tree giving without any waiting anything on return. What I'm what how I understand what, why what this why is uh, Jagadish uh, Baba told to his disciple Goranga, that's Babaji, his order. Because like, we are so foreign, but uh, this Goranga Das Babaji Maharaj is like at that time, almost Siddha. Siddha or almost Siddha. So it's a completely different stage. So, and Jagadish Baba also Siddha. And they are, they are living a very austere life. They are doing Madhukari, they are Bhajan whole days. So, you know, so it's completely different with us, honestly. But uh, we, we want to learn their, their feeling, their mood. And then no. we, we, we wish to inspire ourselves to, to improve ourselves. That is the main, I think, main, uh, things, uh, to, to, to listening. We, we should not blindly follow their activity, but we should take their kind of mood, their feeling for the Radha Mohan and that for, for the Bhakti. That's, I think, we should learn. <laughs> Anyone likes to share something from the West, <laughs> let's say, from Europe, from Zoom? Okay, no, so we will continue. This is a long story, Pandit Sri Ramakrishna Das Babaji. Maybe we won't be able to complete it today. Pandit Ramakrishna Das Babaji's earlier name was Ram Pratap. Ram Pratap was born in the year 1857 in a family with strong traditions of bhakti. His grandfather was a Vaishnava of Ramanuja Sampradaya. He was Siddha in Narayan Kavacha and was well versed in the Shastras. Ramashinma, the Maharaj of Jaipur, appointed him as a tutor for Yuvaraj, for Yuvaraj, crown prince. He also gave him two villages as Jagira and built a house for him near his palace. His son Lakshminarayan was also a great devotee. He left home at an early age and went to the forest, where for a number of years he did japa of Ram Mantra. He was blessed with the darshan of Ram and his brothers mounted on horses. Ram asked him to go back 
home and marry. From his wife, Kamala Devi, was born Ram Pratap. Ram Pratap was only three years old when his father died. His extraordinary intelligence and love for learning enabled him to learn by heart the sutras of Panini, Sarasvat, Vyakarna, and Amarakosha, the Sanskrit grammar, when he was only 11 years old. After his secret thread ceremony, at the age of 11, he performed Savitri Purasvaran and had the darshan of Savitri Devi. Savitri Devi advised him to go to Vrindavan. <coughs> he tried to go to Vrindavan, but his mother did not permit. However, at the age of 13, he somehow succeeded in sneaking away. In Vrindavan, he lived near Govindaji's temple under the care of the Goswami of the temple. Even after coming to Vrindavan, he continued his studies. He learned Nyaya from Sudarshan Shastri of Rangaji's temple, Srimad Bhagavatam from Nishrinmadas Ji of Karoli Kunja, and Hari Bhakti Vilas from Gopilal Goswami. While studying Sats, uh, Satsamdarbas, he used to read 50 chapters of Srimad Bhagavatam before Gopeshwar Madhav every day. He completed his education at the age of 20. After completing his education, he took Diksha and Vesha from Siddha Nityananda Das Babaji and was named Sri Ramakrishna Das. But he was generally called Pandit Baba on account of his learning. On the advice of Gurudev, he went to Govardhan to learn Krishna Lila Smaran from Siddha Sri Krishna Das Baba of Govardhan. After this, he began to live in Barsana and practice Lila Smarana. In Barsana lived the famous Kirtaniya Gorakharan Das Babaji. Pandit Baba began to learn Biyaghana Kirtan from him. Anyone knows what is Biyaghana Kirtan? No. <laughs> Gradually, his absorption in Kirtan increased and absorption in Lila Smarana decreased. Rade, what you are asking? Which word? Gurudev uh, is a Biyagana Kirtan. Biyagana Kirtan. Biyagana. Biyagana. Means the pain of this appearance of someone. Viraha Kirtan. No, not Viraha. Bihagana. Bi, bi Bihagana. Bi bi. bi. ah. Viraha vira Kirtan is there. Maybe it's spelling mistake. Viraha. Viraha. Viraha means the Suffering of Rupa Goswami, Raghunath Goswami, saintly person, he is crying for that. That I am not see you, I am missing you, Viraha Kirtan. And I see Ram Krishna Das Babaji Maharaj when I was five, six year old child. He was living 
इन भक्ति आश्रम वेर स्टिल वैष्णवाज बाबा जीज ऑन लिविंग भक्ति निवास भक्ति निवास नियर इन देर एंड यस नियर ऑन वे ऑफ इस एंड माई ग्रैंड फादर इज गोइंग टू लिसन एम थ्री थर्टी ही गिव क्लास थ्री थर्टी फोर एंड आई वॉज सेवन सिक्स ईयर्स एट ईयर्स ओल्ड चाइल्ड दैट टाइम आई लिस so one thing more good as you appeared <laughs> we are like to ask <laughs> radhe radhe gurudev सब पसंद आ गया ना इधर रखो जो पसंद आ राधे राधे गोविंद गुरुदेव राधे 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 कैन कैन आई आस्क एज यू आर हियर वन मोर थिंग व्हाट वी आर अबाउट व्हाट वी आर रीडिंग या हियर ही सेज दैट ग्रेजुअली हिज अब्सॉर्प्शन इन कीर्तन इंक्रीज an absorption in the lasmarana decreased but uh, you see like anandas baba ji always say how lasmaran is uh, fed by shravana kirtanam how, how they both nourish each other mm. but here uh, what, here is the like is the opposite decrease so why this can happen that if one becomes more absorbed in kirtan lila smaran decreased this diha gana because when you do kirtan you cannot sing as remember you cannot remember so that way uh this uh, what you do you observe there you cannot lila smaran means little decrease but not decrease no because in bhajan or kirtan also if they are meditating one is totally in the lila smaran and one is lila smaran and he is doing bhajan so little decrease that is the excellent okay clear he is not 100% decrease yeah hmm? good good is saying that he had doesn't means that his lila smarana disappear mm-hmm. is not that he did any kind of offense or whatever but kirtan is a an out outer practice that we do with this body na so it helps lila smarana hey. but it got more it got more than lila smaran means he gave his time more to kirtan the lila smarana mm-hmm. so the lila smaran decrease just that's the thing not 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 that is really negative to rila smaran is just that he started to give much much more time to to the to the kirtan so naturally his rila smaran uh, decrease doesn't means that it went out that it disappear gurudev asked him to stop learning kirtan and to devote himself wholly to bhajan mm-hmm. and you remember uh, now to you and bhajan mein chanting will bring for lila asma loud kirtan even the chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare this is also kirtan without moving tongue when you do the bhajan that go bring you to smaran 
understand loudly chanting is different bhav and but in a side chanting you are realizing inside then from a by kirtan he come to bhajan and then the last part understand yeah. uh, you remember gurudev keshav maharaj from radakun he told the story of this baba when he came here last time and he was saying that he was also uh, spending a lot of time studying the veena learn kirtan with the veena so maybe that also here is not saying but keshav maharaj no. say from radakun only taking out some time who is the real bhakta he don't become artist some become artist then it is he go out from the not in the bhajan so this chanting is more recommended than outlook <laughs> but kirtan is good to fix my mind but not become artist artist is not kirtan mm. anything achieve he achieve name respect and power but it is disturb this disturbance in the lila smell mm. so vinod baba never sing outside he sing only with the devotees he never goes in the program say that my sidhan not go in program he goes at the horizon so they are in right way he can be a good a musician musician is not a devotee maybe he can be devotee but lila smaran not mm. they involve externally more mm. that is the meaning of that not good and it will never be done it is something full in no huh? so he stopped learning kirtan then no learning kirtan to be artist <coughs> something we have to learn but one is the becoming musician is not good hmm Our raga ragni have to learn to please my brother Mohan. But I want to be artist. This is the goal. Then what happened? Lila is not good. Myself. Huh? Myself. Yep. You are not saying so much, but it might be also good that because he was so good that. he had to go so many different places to do like performance whatever so this might have a uh, yeah. divine time for lila smaran like yeah in, in that the sense of the thing but yeah. what did it come, come after like yeah. <laughs> understand but even then after he stopped learning kirtan but even then he could not concentrate on bhajan Mm-hmm. Guru Dev then asked him to do Oras Charan of Krishna Mantra for seventeen days. <coughs> Very difficult thing. Can you you like to explain? Charan, I never do in my life because I know poor Charan give the siddhi to him. then rag bhakti is not coming so i never try that 
इन राग भक्ति पुरुष शरण इस नाम को बट इन इस रिचे ने इन दा बुक अबाउट दैट अबाउट व्हाट इज ऑफ द बुक हरि भक्ति विलास हरि भक्ति विलास is the details there about pushan i see my mohan baba one near baba ji is doing pushan he was very siddha purush but at the same time mohan baba is keeping this distance with him. one time i want to see him he say is better to touch him but not talk much this is for you one rag is the mark of the devil come then you more person will start coming and material desire will start money will start coming oh yeah but yeah these are very good book my dear how baba ji has different different details well that is in the mouth after that you see that this life he did the purest charan in uddhav kyari under akadamba tree <coughs> During the first three days, he took only milk. During the next twelve days, only water, and on the remaining two days, not even water. On the seventeenth day, he had the darshan of Radha Krishna. This was confirmed. by baba himself once while he lived in dauji's bagicha a small garden the present site of vrindavan research institute in raman reti that day he was lying under the thin shed in the bagicha some devotees including priya sharan baba kripa sindhu baba and lalit mohan goswami i see this baba priya sharan baba or kripa sindhu baba he yeah, have both were sitting at some distance and talking about the pura sharan performed by baba One of them said that Baba had the darshan of Krishna Balaram after Purasharan. Baba suddenly spoke out, "No, not Krishna Balaram, Radha Krishna." <laughs> <laughs> He further added. Radha Krishna said We are pleased with you Let us know what you want I replied I do not know what I want except your happiness Radha and Krishna then smiled and disappeared After this Baba began to live in Raghav's cave in Puchari the hind portion of Giriraj in which Raghav Pandit an associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu lived 
By the grace of Radha Krishna, he had now become Siddha in Lilasmaran. From two uh, o'clock. By grace of Radha Krishna. Uh, see, this is the part. Who is there? They can bring you. Go on. From two o'clock in the morning to two o'clock in the afternoon, he used to do Lila Smaran inside a cave. After that, he came out of the cave. At this time, there used to be a crowd of sadhus in front of the cave. They sought his advice in bhajan. And Baba removed their doubts and difficulties. Then path and kirtan were performed. This continued until evening. In the evening, Baba went out for Madhukari. After some time, Baba's absorption in Lila Smaran became so deep that it became impossible for him to follow any routine. No one knew when he would sit down for Smaran and when he would come out of the cave. Sometimes he remained lost in Smarana for two or three days continuously and did not go out even for Madhukari. The sadhus who used to collect in front of his cave were deprived of his company. Once at this time, Baba's mother came from Jaipur to see him. She had to remain sitting outside the cave, waiting for him for two days. The third day, when he came out of the cave, he went straight for Madhukari and did not even cast a glance at her. His mother followed him for some distance, weeping and crying. Even then, he did not turn to look at her. She returned at home with a broken heart. When his mother had gone, he began to have difficulty in Lilasmaran and felt restless. He went to Krishna Das Baba and inquired about the cause. Baba said, The cause is obvious. You have committed an offense against your mother. He then wrote a letter to his mother apologizing and requesting her to come to Vrindavan. He arranged for her stay in a separate house in Puchari, in which she lived until her death. He took care of her and did everything possible to make her happy. His Shakti for Lila Smaran was restored as soon as he started serving her. So nice, no? <laughs> this is the book. Baba's mother was also a devotee. Krishna 
may forgive any offense committed against himself, but he never forgives an offense committed against his devotee. After some time, there arose a conflict in Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya regarding Gaura Mantra. Some holding that a separate Gaura Mantra was necessary, others holding that it was not necessary because Gaura was essentially Krishna. Pandit Baba did not want to involve himself in this conflict. Therefore, he went to Barshana to live in Morakuti, a solitary place on the top of the Barsana hill. He lived there for eight years. After the conflict was over, he again came back to the cave. Never go in conflict. On a winter night, he was sleeping inside a cave with the door closed. While a car call stove was burning in the cave to provide heat. In the morning, when he got up, he was surprised to find himself outside of the cave. Obviously, someone had brought him there to save him from the gas of burning charcoal, which could be fatal. This was, however, nothing unusual, since, as we have said before, the spiritual agencies in Braj often come to the help of the Sadakas in times of difficulty or need. Once again, spiritual help came to Baba when some people belonging to another Sampradaya tried to harm him. Baba was generally respected by the Acharyas of all the Sampradayas of Raj because of his devotion, learning, and broad-mindedness. He was well-versed in the Shastras of all the Sampradayas and was also conversant with the modes of their religious practice. Pandit Amulaka Ram Shastri and Baba Hamsadas of Nimbarka Sampradaya, Sri Sudarshanacharya, Sri Dulari Prashad Shastri, and Ganapati Shastri of Ramanuja Sampradaya, Samkarsana Dasji, of Ramananda Sampradaya and Sri Purushottam Bhattaji, the famous scholar and Katha Vachak of Pushti Sampradaya, all came to him for advice on matters relating to the Shastras or religious practices. And Baba always advised them according to the philosophy and practice of their own Sampradaya. Even, even Prangopal Goswami, a descendant of Nityananda Prabhu and the biggest exponent at that time of Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, and Srimad Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati Maharaj the founder president of the Gaudiya mission held him in high esteem and came to him for advice. 
But some orthodox and vicious people of a particular Sampradaya got jealous of him. The ones tried to defame Sri Rupa and Sri Sanatana, the most respected Acharyas of the Gaudiya Sampradaya, by preaching that they originally belonged to their Sampradaya, but were ousted from it on account of their misconduct. Baba forcefully criticized them. They felt very much humiliated and conspired to kill him. One day, they hid themselves somewhere near his cave, so that when he went out for Madhukari, they might attack him on the way. But when Baba came out of the cave, and started towards the village for Madhukari, they saw that a lion was following him like a domesticated dog. When he reached the village, the lion hid himself somewhere near the Samaris of the Gosvamis, Gosvaminis, sorry, on the right side of the village. <coughs> When Baba returned to his cave, the lion again followed him up to the cave and disappeared. The miscreants were both surprised and frightened. They realized that Baba was a Siddha Mahapurusha and their hostile attitude towards him was transformed into one of love and devotion. One day, when Baba was doing bhajan inside a cave, a poisonous snake crawled over his body and coiled round his chest and neck. But he continued his bhajan undisturbed. After some time, the snake crawled down and disappeared. At night, Baba heard a voice. Someone said, You leave this cave. Immediately, Baba left the cave and began to live in Sham Kuti near Kusum Sarovar. <laughs> Pandit Baba never gave diksha to anyone. But many people who received instructions from him in Bhajan regarded him as their Shiksha Guru. Important among these were Sri Guranga das Dasji, Sri Priyasharan Dasji, Sri Kripasindu Dasji, Sri Vishnu Dasji, Sri Keshav Dasji, and Sri Lalit Mohan Goswami. There were also some who, although never initiated by anyone, regarded him alone as their guru, as for example, Thakur Kushala Sinaji of Gijagara. Goranga Das Babaji, whose former name was Dhirendra Nath Chakravarti, and who was the son of a rich landlord of Calcutta, and a brilliant student of Scottish Church College, Calcutta, renounced the world at the age of 20. He took Diksha from Siddha Sri Ram Das Babaji Maharaj of Calcutta and came to Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, he began to do bhajan under the guidance of Siddha Sri Jagadish Das Baba. Jagadish Das Baba was very much impressed by his bhakti bhav and extraordinary intelligence. He asked him to study the shastras from Pandit Baba. Pandit Baba 
took special interest in him and began to teach him. In due course, he acquired mastery over Srimad Bhagavatam, Sat Samdarbha, and the other Bhakti Shastras. Pandit Baba then asked him to take up one book after another and deliver discourses on it in the presence of sadhus, who had again started coming to him in the evening. His discourses began to attract large crowds and became a regular part of Baba's routine in the evening. Shall we stop? Yeah, 6.15. Shall we stop, Gurudev? It's still several pages. 6.15 now. We can continue. Oh. Like, it's like half story up to now. Maybe we can do it next half. Maybe. Yeah. It's long. So now we are like half. Then we can yeah. precise half. Yeah. Uh, Eighteen pages more. Eighteen now. Jai Jai Shri Radhe.